Okay, so today I'm going to show you how we experimentally visualize airflows and get numbers on airflows. And the way that I normally do that is through a technique known as particle image velocimetry or PIV. Um, it's a fundamentally simple technique at heart, but it's quite complex in reality. So I'm going to show you through some of the basics and talk you through the experimental facility here. So, basics of PIV. To start with, you have a wind tunnel. I've lopped off the front of the wind tunnel in this diagram for clarity and just indicated where the flow is coming into the tunnel with the flow arrow. The center bit is the test section, which is where you put the stuff in that you want to look at. And then the back is the sort of exit diffuser or expansion that goes into the tunnel fan. It's this relatively small bit, the test section, that's what we're interested in. Now, because I've got a long diffuser expansion section on my tunnel, I've actually put a camera in that section there. Now, why I've got a camera here will become clear later. Up the top, there comes a laser sheet down that's held by a laser probe that's on a traverse. The traverse allows the sheet to move forwards and backwards. This allows me to look at different sections of the airflow as it goes along. For a more three-dimensional representation of this setup, we can see here the laser attached to the traverse holder at the top and the camera shooting at the back. Now, the point where the camera looks at where the laser is illuminating is the bit that we're actually looking at and trying to investigate. But why do we want random images of a laser sheet? Well, simply put, we seed the room with a lot of particles, kind of you can imagine like a sort of smoke, but it, it fills the whole room and is quite a consistent density. And this laser is actually fired in pairs, so we get multiple pairs of images at really close spacing. We're talking sort of 50 microseconds or less, so very, very tiny time spacings. So when we get these two images here, we get them received at the camera, and between the two images, the flow has moved somewhat in the tunnel. So we look at those two images, we see what the difference is between the two, and from that we can see how much the flow has changed. Now, we can see stuff actually, because we have images of the particles, and we can see the particles because the laser at very high intensity is shooting those particles, and the light is scattering off those particles and being reflected back to the camera. So for this testing today, we've got two veins, the laser probe, and that's what we're going to be looking at, just two vortices of two veins. Two wings that will make vortices, and they'll go down and get analyzed. In the back of the tunnel, you can see a camera there. Um, this here is the, the laser. Um, it's quite beastly. It will destroy your eyes if you're not careful. Um, they're the computers used for analysis. And around this side, we have a traverse which is what moves the laser probe along the tunnel. And this is the basic setup. So this is the, the water cooling unit for the laser. And that's where the laser actually comes out. You can see it getting emitted there. I can't actually see that because I'm wearing laser safety goggles. Then it comes up through that periscope which is full of mirrors and down there. And if you want to see what the laser safety goggles do, it's pretty cool actually. So here's the goggles. How cool is that? So you can see we've got two images here, spaced at a known distance. Then we analyze it. You can see some vectors getting drawn there. And that gives you your velocities around there. Which is basically, this is your pixel displacement. And then if you know how far your pixels moved, you know how big your image is, and you know the time between the two images, you know your velocity. And then our laser shoes in its new position. And then, with a little bit of manipulation in the program, you can see that this is a whole bunch of planes taken. And if this was like our little wing up here, you can see these are the vortices progressing backwards. And that is how we visualize flows.